welcome to another episode of Rock's Garage. I'm your host, Dan, and today we're going to be installing part number LIFT-502 on this 2012 EasyGo TXT. Before we get started, let's take a look at what comes with the kit and the tools we'll need for the installation. When you open up your kit, you're going to find your main front assembly, your two front shock absorbers, your brand new steering rack, and your steering column extension. Also in your kit, you're going to find your two rear lift blocks, your four rear U-bolts, your two rear shock mounting plates, and your two bags of hardware. Now that we've taken a look at all the parts, let's take a look at the tools we need to perform the installation. First up, we have various impact tools. We have a couple air impact tools, as well as a battery-powered impact gun that has a 19 millimeter socket on it for the wheels and tires. After that, we have a 3 8 a 10 millimeter, a half inch, 13 millimeter, 9 16 5 8 16 millimeter, 17 millimeter, and three quarter wrenches. We have a couple of ratcheting wrenches, as well as a screwdriver with a socket attachment and some socket extensions, a 10 millimeter and a 17 millimeter socket. And then we have a 3 8 a 9 16 another 9 16 and a three quarter socket, as well as a 9 16 deep well sockets and an adapter. After that, we have some wire snips, needle nose pliers, and some channel locks, followed up by a dead blow hammer, a tape measure, and some safety glasses. Now before we move any further with our installation process, we want to go over a few safety precautions. If you have an electric cart, you want to flip your tow run switch to tow, and then after that, you want to turn your cart off and set your parking brake. And then before we jack our cart up, we're also going to chalk our rear wheels. As I'm sure you've noticed, we've completely removed the front cowl from the cart. Now we've done that to make accessing our upper shock bolts a little easier, but we've also done that to make filming and showing you guys what we're doing a little easier as well. Once you've completed all your safety steps, we can begin by jacking up the front of the cart. Now that our cart is firmly placed on jack stands, we can go ahead and remove and discard our front wheels as we will not be able to reuse them once the lift is installed. Now that our wheels are removed and discarded, our next step is to remove the hubs. Now we are going to want to keep the hubs as those will be reinstalled on the new lift kit. If you're having a little bit of trouble getting your hub cap off, what you can do is you can place a jack stand underneath of the front axle, and this will allow the shock to be transferred to the hub cap instead of being absorbed by the suspension. Now that our front hubs are removed, our next step is to remove our front splash guard. Now we're going to do that by removing the two bolts that you see here, and then there are two more bolts underneath of it that we will be removing as well. Now that our front splash guard is removed, we can begin to remove the front assembly. Now before we do that, we're going to straighten out our steering wheel so that everything stays lined up, and then we're going to put a jack underneath of the front assembly to hold the weight of it while we're disconnecting the parts. Now that our jack is in place, we can begin disassembling our front end. We're going to start first with our steering arm. Now that our steering arm is removed, our next step is to remove our two upper shock bolts. Now that we've removed our two upper shock bolts, our next step is to remove the leaf springs. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna to have to peel back the floor mat so that we can access the bolts that hold the leaf springs on. When pulling back your floor mat, you only really need to pull it back around the brake pedal. That way, you'll have enough room to access these bolts, but if you feel like you need more room, you can pull it back over the gas pedal. You just might have to cut your floor mat in order to do that. Once you removed your six leaf spring bolt, the entire front assembly is ready to come out of the cart. Now, if you don't have a rolling jack like we have here, you're definitely gonna need two people in order to get this off the cart. 
Before we install our new front assembly on the cart, we're going to take it over to the bench and assemble it so that it goes on in one nice easy step. Now that we're over here at our workbench, we're going to assemble the entire front end of the cart before we place it on the cart as this will make installing it a little bit easier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our shocks on either side. Now that our shocks are loosely installed, we're going to install the bolts for our upper A-arms. Now before we do that, we're going to rotate our ends out so you can see about three or four of the threads, as this will get our camber about where we want it. We'll have to make those final camber adjustments, camber and toe adjustments, once the kit's already installed on the cart. Now that our upper A-arm bolts are in place, the next step is to install our new steering rack. Now you want to make sure that the pin for your steering column is on your passenger side. Once you've bolted your steering rack to your frame, our next step is to remove the cotter pins on the ends of the tie rod you're going to install them on your spindles. Remove the castle nut and the lock washer. Now I'm going to make some toe adjustments here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it where I think it should go. So I know I want it to be almost relatively straight so that my steering rack can go out to that point. So I'm going to extend this until it gets there and then go ahead and install it. Now I'll repeat it on the other side. Now that everything is loosely assembled on the front end of the kit, we're going to go back through and snug down all of our hardware on the kit. We're not going to fully tighten it just yet so that we have some play when we're installing the front end on the cart, but we are going to snug down all of the hardware. Now that our front end is assembled, it's time to place it on the cart. Now when you go to place the new front assembly onto the cart, you're definitely going to need either a rolling jack stand or two people as the new assembly is quite heavy. Once you get your front assembly lined up with the cart, you're going to loosely place all of your hardware into the front assembly. Once all of your hardware is in place, then you can go ahead and, and tighten everything down. Now that your six bolts are in place, we can go ahead and tighten them all down to secure the front assembly in place. Once you've tightened your bottom six bolts, you can move forward and tighten the two top bolts that are located where the original shocks were mounted. Now that our new front assembly is secured in place, our next step is to attach our new extended steering column. When you're installing your new extended steering column, you want to make sure that the thicker part of the tube is towards the top of the cart. Once those are installed, you can go ahead and tighten those bolts down. Before you tighten anything down, you want to make sure that your steering wheel is straight. That way, when we go to adjust our toe and our camber, everything stays aligned. Now that our new steering column is in place, our next step is to grease the outer arm of the spindle. And then after that, we're going to put our OE hubs and hub nuts and cotter pins on the cart. So I just want to show you the difference between an old and a new cotter pin. Now, while we still can reuse the old cotter pin, it's going to be much, much easier to use a new cotter pin when we go to place it on the spindle. Now, if you're going to use a new cotter pin, the size for that is a 5 32nd by 1 and 3 quarter length cotter pin. Once your cotter pin's in place, 
can place your hubcap back on. And now we're going to repeat the process on the passenger side. Now that both of our hubs are installed, we're going to go ahead and grease our two front spindles. Now that our hubs are in place, we can go ahead and jack up the front of the cart a little more so we can put our new wheels and tires on. Once your wheels and tires are on your cart, you can go ahead and remove your jack stands and lower the cart down onto the ground. Now that the installation is complete on the front of our cart, we're going to pull it out, turn it around so we can begin installing the rear. Now that our new front assembly is installed and our cart is turned around, we're going to go ahead and take our safety precautions and chalk our front wheels. We're also going to jack the rear end of the cart up and place it on some jack stands. Now that our cart is up in the air and securely placed on jack stands, we're going to go ahead and take our OE wheels off and discard them as they will not be able to be reused once the lift is installed. Before we start removing anything from our cart, we want to place our jack back under our rear axle so that we can take the weight off of our rear suspension. Once our wheels and tires are removed, our next step is to remove the lower shock bolt, and then after that's removed, we're going to push the shock up and out of the way so that we can access our forward nuts for the two U-bolts on the back of the cart. Now that our two U-bolts are removed, our next step is to remove the two bolts that hold the leaf spring in place. Now that our leaf spring is removed, we can go ahead and lower our axle so we can put our new lift block and our leaf spring on top of the axle. Now that we've removed our leaf spring and we've dropped our axle down, it's time to start assembling our rear lift kit. Now as I'm sure you've noticed, your lift kit comes with both straight hardware and a couple U-bolts. Now the only way we would use the U-bolts is if we do not have this lower shock mounting bracket welded onto the axle. If you do, you're going to use your straight bolts, and if you don't, you're going to use your U-bolts. So because we have an electric cart with these lower shock mounting brackets welded onto the axle, we're going to use the straight hardware. Our first step is to place the lift block on top of the axle. After that, we're going to take our leaf spring and place it on top of the new lift block and we're going to put our hardware in, our OE hardware in, in the front and the back. We're just going to loosely install our OE hardware at this time. Now that our leaf spring is loosely in place, we're going to take our new shock mounting bracket with the hole for the shock absorber facing up and place that on top of the leaf spring. After that, we're going to take our straight hardware, put it down through the hole and through the bracket on the axle, loosely bolting it in place at the bottom. And you're going to repeat that for all four holes. Now that our hardware is loosely installed, we're going to jack the axle up so that we can attach our shock absorber using the OE hardware. At this time, we're just going to leave our hardware loose so that it'll make the installation on the driver's side a little bit easier. And then once we're finished with the installation on the driver's side, then we'll come back and tighten down all of our hardware. Now that our U-bolts, our leaf spring, and our shocks are all removed, before we drop our axle down, we need to disconnect the brake cable on our driver's side. The brake cable on the driver's side of the cart is a little bit shorter than the passenger side, so we need to remove that in order to let the axle move freely so we can install our lift properly. Now, in order to do that, we need to remove the cotter pin underneath and pull the C-clip off and then remove the brake cable itself from the bracket that's welded to the axle. Then after that, we're going to reroute our brake cable on our driver's side so that it can come down and hang freely underneath the cart.
Now that all of our hardware is installed on the rear of the cart, our next step is to go back through and tighten down all of our hardware. Now, we want to make sure that we're tightening both sides of the cart evenly so that we don't wind up getting into a binding situation where we can't move our axle around. Now we've tightened down our lift blocks, our next step is to reinstall our leaf spring hardware and tighten that down. Now that our leaf spring bolts are tightened down, we can go ahead and reattach our brake cable on our driver's side. Now that all of our hardware is tightened down on the rear of our cart, it's time to put our new wheels and tires on. Now that our wheels and tires are on the cart, we can go ahead and remove our jack stands and place our cart back on the ground. Once we've done that, we're going to turn it back around we're going to adjust our toe and our camber. Now that we've got our cart turned back around, we're going to go ahead and adjust our toe and our camber. Now, before we do any of that, we want to make sure that we reset our parking brake and we turn our cart back off. Before we adjust our toe, the first thing we need to do is we need to straighten our steering wheel. After we've done that, we can release the jam nuts on the tie rods. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to measure from center to center on the tires. And we want to make sure that the front of the tires is about an eighth of an inch shorter than the back of the tires. Once we got our cart turned around, we decided that we didn't really need to make any camber adjustments. But if you need to make some camber adjustments, I'm going to show you how to do that. If you need to make any camber adjustments on your front end, the first thing you're going to have to do is jack up the front of the cart and remove the wheels and tires. After you've done that, you're going to need to remove the bolt that holds your upper A-arm to your spindle. Once you've done that, you can adjust the end of your upper A-arm to achieve the desired camber. Now that you've got your toe and your camber adjusted to your desired settings, that'll complete the installation of part number LIFT-502 on this 2012 EasyGo TXT. Thanks for watching this episode of Rock's Garage, and I'll see you next time.